Hello Sagittarius and welcome to my channel Tarot by Gabrielle. This is going to be a general reading for Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus signs, looking at your recent past, current energy and immediate future, answering the question, what do you need to know right now in order to move forward in alignment with your higher self? As always, I've gone ahead and pulled the overall energy for the reading and clarified those messages, as well as the overall theme for the reading, which we'll jump into in just a second. I have the tarot deck we'll be using already shuffled, as well as the decks that I'll be using in the extended. Any information on the extended reading or on booking a personal reading with me is in the description box below. Last thing, please remember that these are general readings. They are not here to resonate fully for everyone, and they won't resonate fully for everyone. So do please remember to take what does resonate and helps your personal situation and leave what does not. All right, Sagittarius. In your recent past, you have truth with the lovers in reverse. Um, the first thing I saw when I pulled this truth card, and I saw this in another reading, but it's really coming through in your reading too, is you have this moon rising card. So I very much see this card as like rising from the ashes, right? Like Phoenix kind of rising from the ashes, growth, you know, evolving, things of that nature. Now in your recent past, you were spending some time in places and with people that didn't really align with your worth. And whether or not you were able to recognize that at the time, I do feel as if that truth has come out more and more, especially if what if you're in this situation, I feel like you're probably being triggered a lot more. And if you're not in the situation anymore, the more distance that you get away from the situation, I feel like you're able to kind of see, yeah, like that, that didn't really align with me. That wasn't um, what I deserved, you know, whatever the case might be. Because now in your current energy, you have knowledge with the tower. So this tower card, I actually view it in a couple of different ways because it feels as if this tower could very much be a past energy, like you've been through a tower. Now, I feel like basically what this message is saying, especially with the coupled with the knowledge card, is taking the knowledge that you have gained from the things that haven't worked out, from the things that have fallen apart, such as, yeah, I was accepting less than what I deserve, or that didn't really align with my worth or the life that I desire. And taking that knowledge and applying it to your life in a way to um, you know, create a better, more fulfilling reality for yourself, which is literally what life is all about. We go through things, we learn from those things, and we grow our life in a way we wouldn't be able to if we hadn't gone through the things that we've been through. And I feel like that's very much the theme of the reading that we're doing today, because then in your immediate future, you have celebration with the magician. This is very positive, very, um, you know, obviously exciting energy, right? Magician kind of talking about manifestations, be, being becoming reality. Obviously, you have the celebration card, which is excitement and just celebrating life, celebrating the experience. And I feel like what I'm gaining or gathering from this is if you're able to take um, the knowledge and apply it, the knowledge from your past, the knowledge of what you've learned, um, and apply it to your life moving forward, only good can come. Only good can come from that. And I feel like if you've been doing that, then you can absolutely expect some very positive things in your future. Now, the overall theme is go deeper. So this is interesting because I feel for some of you, there's a need to dive deeper into a past situation and really try to understand it, you know, understand the ins and outs of it. Why did it happen this way? Why did I attract this kind of energy? If our life is a reflection of the way that we feel about ourselves within, what was this trying to show me? What was this trying to teach me? Um, you know, the one of my favorite quotes is, and I, mean, I say it's one of my favorite quotes and then I'm going to completely misquote it because I don't actually know the quote word for word, but the, I like the meaning behind the quote, which is basically that the extent to which a person can grow and evolve is directly correlated to that person's ability to accept truth about themselves without running away to being able to see the role that we have played in our own suffering and say, yeah, that was an unfair situation. Yeah, I didn't deserve that. But what was this trying to teach me? Because the more that we can look at it from the lens of being the student and being willing to grow from that situation, the more that we can take our painful experiences and transmute them 
into something positive. Otherwise, we allow our negative experiences to start to dictate our decisions moving forward and we, we start to attract more of those negative decisions. So it's really important when I talk about a lot of that to remember that your trauma and the things that you have been through is not your fault. But in, in any way, shape or form, you know, the negative things that have happened to you, the neg negative experiences that you have found yourself in, they're not your fault. However, it is your responsibility to heal, grow, learn, evolve from those experiences. Nobody else can do that for you. All right, let's start, Sagittarius. That was a kind of a long intro. Looking at your recent past, you have truth with the lovers. In reverse, recent past for Sagittarius, please. What does Sagittarius need to know regarding their recent past? Recent past. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, right out of the gate. Judgment in reverse. Seven of Wands in reverse. Knight of Wands in reverse. Okay. Judgment in reverse is kind of exactly what I feel like this knowledge in this Tower card is really saying. To me, it has always been a card of needing to see the meaning behind your experience. Like, kind of like what this card is saying. Go deeper. You know, seeing the truth behind what's going on, not focusing so much on these circumstances, but what, this, what the meaning behind the circumstances is. Now, with the Seven of Wands in reverse, that is an energy of lacking boundaries, not standing up for yourself, or not... Um, making decisions that align with personal truths that you're trying to adopt. Now, this energy is, oftentimes I feel as if the seven of wands in reverse energy is, is absolutely not intentional because no, we never mean to allow people to walk all over us or we never mean to, to get taken advantage of. We never, you know, no one goes into a situation and is like, wow, I really hope this person walks all over my boundaries today, you know? Um, but I do feel like in high, it's always easier in hindsight to see you know, I didn't set boundaries. I didn't stand up for myself and what I knew I was deserving of at the time. And then understanding, okay, now why is that the case? Because with the Knight of Swords in reverse, there is an energy of chasing. You're trying to make something either see or align with your value while accepting in the meantime um, the energy of it not aligning with your values. So we see this a lot in relationships. When we try to chase a person, you know, we show up as our best self, you know, in the best way that we know how, being willing to give it everything that we have, and that person gives us, you know, very little. But we keep showing up with that energy thinking that eventually that person's going to see our worth or they're going to see that, um, you know, we are deserving of the reciprocation. And we take that person not seeing our value and what we're deserving of as a challenge to prove our value. Um, you know, chasing can come in so many different forms. And it's when we try to force something to become something that it com continues to show us that it's not. And I feel like learning to kind of understand when we do that, you know, oftentimes it, it, we hear all the time in the spiritual community, attract, don't chase, attract, don't chase. And that's, yeah, absolutely. That's a fantastic advice. But we also have to understand why we have a tendency to chase. Well, I chase because I don't think I'm deserving of the outcome. Therefore, I think that if I'm not controlling it, it's never going to happen. I can't surrender because I don't believe that I'm deserving or capable or lovable or whatever the case is. So I do chase because I think that that is the best way or the, the most likely that I'm going to, to receive or get what it is that I desire and, and kind of breaking it down from there. Okay. Why do I feel unlovable? Why do I feel undeserving? You know, where does this stem from? What limiting beliefs are coming up through this? I feel like that's really what the universe is asking you to do regarding your past and trying to understand, um, again, like what this is trying to teach you. Recent past for Sagittarius, please, because, and I feel like, well, I'm not going to say that yet. I'm going to wait. Recent pass for Sagittarius. That, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Five of Swords, Empress in Reverse, Eight of Swords, and the Star. I mean, this right here, Sagittarius, is the definition of survival mode. It's the definition of this me against the world mentality. You know, I always have to be the one to protect myself or to force outcomes or to like basically this mindset of if, if I don't do it, it will never happen. If I don't um, force this person to see my value, no one will ever see my value. If I don't sacrifice my mental and emotional well-being for the sake of an income, I'm never going to have what it is that I need and deserve financially. And those beliefs are 
absolutely valid in the sense that you probably believe that way because that's what you have experienced. You know, us as humans, we have a tendency to believe in alignment with what we've experienced. And I feel like that's a lot of what your past has shown you. It's shown you that unless you sacrifice your worth, mental, emotional well-being for the sake of something, then you're never going to receive that thing. And I feel like that is what the universe is trying to get you to see is that your worth inherently, your value is um, and comes from who, who you are, the fact that you're alive on this earth. You being who you are right now, regardless of your past mistakes, regardless of your flaws, you are deserving of love and abundance and goodness and kindness and, and all of the fantastic things that you're willing to give to the world. But so many of us believe that our worth comes from some things outside of ourselves, like our looks or how much we give or um, how intelligent we are or, you know, whatever the case might be. And so we think that if we don't overgive or if we're not trying to be perfect all the time, that we're never going to receive what it is that we desire. And that's when we experience burnout and staying in places where we don't belong and sacrificing ourselves for the sake of, of an outcome. Now, again, the Eight of Swords here, these are all very much limiting beliefs. And I feel like I know this is talking, I feel like we're diving really deep into your past, but I'm not going to lie. I feel like a lot of this reading is about your past. And, and you know, so when we go through so many things for so long that make us feel not good enough or unworthy or undeserving, we start to believe it. And we start to say, well, in all of my relationships, I've never been valued. Or in all of my days of being in a working, a working adult, I've never actually received the kind of income that I'm deserving of for the kind of work that I'm doing. Or I have to overwork myself in order to receive an income, whatever the case might be. And so we start to believe those things. Now, the, the problem is that our experience is not truth. Our experience is merely a reflection of our belief system, right? Right? So learning to identify the limiting beliefs so that you can then start to heal and reframe them is where we start to create a better life for ourselves. So I really feel like this is about learn, like taking what you've learned from survival and learning that you don't have to survive anymore. You know, life, you, it's, it's literally learning about leaning into to faith and abundance and understanding that life can be good. You are deserving of good things, but... I'm not saying it's sunshine and rainbows all the time by any means, but um, the majority of it should be positive. All right. Recent past for Sagittarius, please. Or at least an equal part. Recent past for Sagittarius, please. All right. Two of cups in reverse, the knight of swords in reverse, and the six of swords. Okay. Two of Cups in Reverse to me is an energy of um, being separated from self. You know, yes, it can be separation from something else, separation from something that you loved, absolutely. But if you dive deeper into the energy, we're not talking about circumstances, we're talking about what's going on within. Um, separation of self, meaning, uh, you know, that energy can be a lot of like disregarding your own personal truths or disregarding what you are trying to learn to be true, such, such as I'm deserving, I'm capable, I'm lovable, um, for, for the sake of something. Because that's, the, again, this is the chasing energy. So it's almost like you, in a way, lost yourself in pursuit of something. That is basically what I'm gathering from this. Lost yourself in pursuit of something because you felt like you had to um, overgive or chase or sacrifice or whatever the case is for the sake of something. Now, yes, absolutely, you know, when we're creating the life of our dreams, sacrifice is going to be necessary. Sacrificing vices, bad habits, short-term pleasure for long-term gains, you know, those things absolutely. But never, ever will the life that you are deserving of, the abundance you're deserving of, the love that you're deserving of, require you to sacrifice your worth. That is the biggest thing that I feel like um, people can kind of kind of get backwards a little bit is yes sacrifice is required but it's never at the extent um at the expense of your worth and so there's almost this yeah separation from self separation from um like who you really are what you really desire and deserve in pursuit of something um and I feel like that's why things played out the way that they did so now you learned a lot. You've learned a lot from this. Maybe maybe I talked about all of that and you're like, yeah, I've learned all of that. And now it's about taking what you've learned and applying it. That's where wisdom comes in, right? If there's anything I've learned on this journey, it's that we learn things twice. Well, I think we learn things a lot more than twice, but 
in, in like a very high level view, we learn things twice. We learn it, we gain the knowledge, and then we take that knowledge and we apply it to our life and then it becomes wisdom. It becomes something that, that we truly believe. But okay, current energy for Sagittarius knowledge with the tower. Current energy for Sagittarius knowledge with the tower. And before you come at me in the comments saying that I'm too analytical or that I don't read the cards enough and I talk too much, please remember that I'm a life coach, a spiritual life coach using tarot as a tool. I am not just a tarot reader. And if that is not for you, that is okay. All right. Ooh. Interesting. Sagittarius, you've been in a place of lack for so long. So five of wands. Oh, okay. I'll take that one too. Five of wands, six of pentacles, queen of swords in reverse, knight of pentacles. You've been in a place of lack or loss or um, limitation or survival for so long that there's a part of you that almost isn't even open to receiving because you've become comfortable in the chase. I can super relate to that. Um, you know, when we are in survival mode for so long, you know, draining ourselves, spinning our wheels, um, constantly fighting to, to be seen, heard, valued, um, that actually becomes, in a really backwards kind of way, our comfort zone. Because we understand, you know, our ego likes what it predicts. I talk about this a lot in my readings, your ego likes what it can predict. So it likes to know what it can survive. And when you get used to survival mode and specifically a certain level of survival mode, your ego actually very much prefers that because it goes, you know, I actually really like being able to know that I'm gonna be disappointed or hurt or undervalued or whatever the case is because I know I can survive it. Your ego's main goal and purpose is to keep you alive and it will do that at whatever cost. And that's why we never wanna allow our ego to, to drive the, drive us forward. And so I was gonna say drive the truck. <laughs> I don't know why, but anyway. Um, so this is really this energy that you're in now about breaking out of resistance to your own abundance. It's really interesting how we, have human, we as humans have a tendency to resist our own abundance um, by you know, choosing less than what we deserve or you know, places where we feel more quote unquote safe or situations that you know, don't really serve us for the sake of survival because we think that we have to because if I don't stay where I stay in this situation or stay where I'm undervalued or stay where I'm sacrificing my worth, then I won't have what it is that I need to feel safe or to be alive, basically. Um, so right now is almost about like, and, and I feel like this is going to be coupled with understanding your past more is once we understand why we've received so much lack and why we've been stuck in survival mode for so long, such as, well, that's what I learned when I was a kid, or that's what I've learned in my relationships, or that's what I was taught, or that's what, how, how society works. Um, once we can kind of learn where it stems from, we can start to like literally unwire our brain from thinking that way. Like, this sounds very uh, scientific right but literally like unwiring the way that you've been taught to think which is I you know am supposed to struggle financially or I, I'm supposed to be alone forever or relationships are pain or whatever the case is when you can start to unwire the belief systems that have kept you stuck in survival mode you can then start to rewire yourself from in a better place such as I know I'm deserving I know I'm lovable I know I'm capable that's where we start to take the knowledge of what we've learned and apply it to our lives and so right now I feel like it's kind of interesting because in the way that I see this it's like the universe really wants to give you what it is that you desire like love financial abundance whatever the case is the universe really wants to give that to you and I almost feel like is trying to in some way either trying to guide you toward it or get you to open up your mind to solutions and in, in other forms or whatever the case is but there's a part of you that's closed off to it a little bit maybe because you don't think it's possible or that you don't think um, or because you're so used to survival or lack you know you're having a hard time opening yourself up to it that um 
it's almost like you're fighting against what it is that you desire. That, that's kind of this energy, which I'm not saying you're going to lose. Like, I don't want that to scare you, but just bringing that into your awareness and, and understanding that the more that you can start to tap into that part of you that knows that you're capable, loving, deserving, and supported, the more that you can open yourself up to receiving what it is that you truly desire. Current energy for Sagittarius. Current energy for Sagittarius, please. It's like your past is leading you to your future. Your past is leading you to your future. Without your past. You know, I hear all the time in the comments, especially on this channel, like when people have been through something, and, and I understand this, there's no judgment here. But like, we'll be like, oh, that was such a waste of time. Or I wish I would have known now what I knew then. Or I wish I would have known then what I know now. Or whatever the case is. Like, man, I wish that never would have happened. But seriously, the more that we can look at it and say, if this had to happen to teach me what I needed to learn to, to get to where I'm trying to go, then what was this trying to teach me? Because I, I, you know, I never, and if there's anything I've learned in my life, even the worst parts of my life, even the worst relationships I've ever had were never a waste of time. They always had a deeper purpose. Now at the time, if you would have told me that, I would have been like, shut the hell up. You know, obviously that's not what you want to hear when you're hurting. But the more that you can try to look at things from that perspective and adopt, like I said, kind of that um, student um, mentality, the more that you can start to open yourself up. Because Here's the thing, if we look at our past and we say, that just sucks, relationships just suck, everything ends in pain, you know, we look at it from those um, truths that we tend to create from our painful experiences, well then moving forward, if we, if we attract what we expect and you expect pain because that's what you've been through, you're going to attract more pain. And that's, again, that's not me saying it's your fault. Obviously, what has happened to you and what you've come to expect isn't your fault, but the more, um, that you can learn that there's a purpose for our pain, there's a purpose for our experiences in a deeper way than we might go deeper, right? In a deeper way than we might be able to see on the surface, the more that we open ourselves up to creating better for ourselves. Um, it's hard. It, it is. I, I understand. And it's very triggering. I feel like when you first hear it, at least it was for me. Um, but it's the best, that, that adopting that truth into my life and being willing to see things from that perspective has drastically changed my life and opened me up to be able to attract the life I have now, which I never ever thought would be possible. So I'm trying to say this to say, I want you to have the life that you desire and deserve. Current energy for Sagittarius clarifying knowledge with the tower, please. Oh. Current energy for Sagittarius clarifying knowledge with the tower. I want to turn all the way around like that. See, you are being divinely guided. Being divinely, aha, being divinely guided to distance yourself from pe people, places, or things that bring up these feelings, these feelings of being unlovable, undeserving, not good enough, um, because that's where your resistance lies, and that's what the universe is trying to, now that doesn't mean like you got to walk away from your whole life, and you know, that's not what I'm saying, but distancing yourself from the people that make you, people that you surround yourself with should lift you up. They should make you feel good about yourself. They should inspire you. They should make you feel um, proud of who you are and where you're going. And I feel like so many of us, especially when we're on a spiritual journey, it's hard to find people that can match our energy. And so we start to, you know, stay in places that bring us down because we think that if we don't, um, we're never going to find the people that match our energy. Like, you know, Basically, we're willing to stay where we don't belong or we're willing to stay in lower vibrational situations because we think that we have to. And so this almost feels like this is the universe guiding you to distancing yourself from people that remind you of these limiting beliefs that you have about being unloving, undeserving, not good enough. Taking the knowledge of what you've learned, which is that you know you deserve better now, Sagittarius. I feel like that's the biggest thing. You know you deserve better. You know who you are. And now taking that and applying it to your life and saying, I'm no longer going to accept what doesn't align with what it is that I know 
I'm deserving of. Because you are definitely being guided to remove yourself from places where you don't belong. Either anymore or never did belong there. Um, because that's the biggest thing I have learned about manifestation is in order to attract the life that we are desiring, deserving of, we have to become unapologetic about what it is that we know we deserve. To the extent that we say, I know what I deserve and I am not afraid to say no to anything that doesn't align with that. Friends, family members, romantic relationships, jobs, career paths, whatever the case is. Um, and, and when we can, because, because you know what sacrificing your worth is going to lead to. You've been there. You've done it probably a hundred times in your life, Sagittarius. You've done the whole sacrificing your worth thing. You've seen where it leads you. So what do you, how do you take that knowledge now and apply it to your life in a way that makes sure that you're not doing that anymore? Current energy for Sagittarius. Current energy for Sagittarius, please. Oh, that turned over when I moved it, so I'm going to take it as the Four of Swords. That's in reverse, too, then. Okay, Four of Swords, Ten of Pentacles. Aha! See, the Ten of Pentacles in reverse is, you know, typically can be this energy of needing to focus more on gratitude, undervaluing the things that are currently in your life. But I actually see this as you needing to reflect on where you are undervalued in your life, on where you feel undervalued as a person, as a, as a being. Because they feel like... I feel like you're still trying to fit in places where you don't belong. I do. Um, it's like you're, I don't know if you're trying to shrink yourself. It's like you're trying to, you're trying to shrink yourself or you're trying to, you're, you're staying in places where you have to change yourself. Or maybe if you're not, you're, you're in this process of learning what it is that you have from your past and you're getting rid of things that don't align with you, right? It could go either way. But I do feel as if the universe is asking you to do some reflection, to sit with yourself and think about where you, um, I don't know, like where you feel, where you are undervalued in your life. Because when you stop allowing yourself to be undervalued, you start opening yourself up to what does and will value you um, if you're willing to kind of face the unknown in between, which is the hard part. All right, immediate future for Sagittarius clarifying celebration with the magician. That's some pretty exciting energy. So if you know me or you followed my channel for a while, I'm not typically one to predict outcomes. I don't feel like that helps anybody on their journey. So my goal is to tell you what you need to know to create the best possible outcome for yourself. So that is the goal. We have more power than we give ourselves credit for. So let's see. Sagittarius is immediate future celebration with the magician. What does Sagittarius need to know moving forward? Immediate future for Sagittarius celebration with the magician. That's why you have go deeper. It's like go deeper into trying to figure out like what doesn't align with you anymore. And maybe like there were certain situations that did once align with you, like where you did really fit in or, but I feel like if you, if you have to fit in, then you already don't belong because that means adapting to something else, right? Belonging is being who you are and being surrounded by people and situations that accept that without you having to change anything about yourself. Fitting in already indicates having to be something that you're not. So I don't know, just something that came to mind. All right, immediate future for Sagittarius celebration with the magician. Oh, this is a long reading. The moon. Yeah, that is, and I just said that before... I uh, started shuffling was 
being willing to face the unknown, the fear of, you know, if I walk away from this relationship or if, if I set a boundary or if I choose myself or if I quit this job that makes me feel horrible about myself, you know, what, you know, we have a tendency to think of like what the worst case scenario could be, right? If, if I, if I do this, am I going to end up alone, broke, homeless, scared, you know, having nothing, whatever the case is. The answer to that is no, <laughs> you know, well, anything can happen. But what I'm trying to get at is that your fear most of the time is an illusion, right? Now that's where you kind of have to learn to balance the spiritual and the practical is understanding that yes, the universe is absolutely supporting you in every single step of your journey. Your needs will always be met when you are choosing yourself. We never have to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of our needs. But if we believe that that is the case, that is what we will experience. And so this is about embracing the unknown, being willing to embrace the fear, taking leaps of faith and believing that, you know, no longer allowing yourself to stay where you don't belong is where you create the life that, um, that aligns with you instead of you trying to align with the life you want, if that makes sense. Um, because that's what getting into alignment is all about. It's not becoming something. It's remembering who you are underneath the trauma and the pain and what society has told you you are and what your parents have told you you are. Remembering who you are and then choosing, making decisions in alignment with that, which is where how we get into alignment is when we, be, we remember who we are and then, you know, make decisions from that place of authenticity. Immediate future for Sagittarius. So embracing the unknown. That's a big part of that's, I would even say the biggest part of creating the life that we deserve. You know, so many people think, oh, I took that leap of faith and then things didn't work out immediately. Therefore, that leap of faith was stupid. When we take a leap of faith towards the life that we deserve, which is oftentimes also taking it away from the one that we don't, um, that is, we don't just take the leap and then everything falls into place. You take the leap and then you have to take that leap every single day, even when things aren't working out, even when it feels uncomfortable, even when you're in fear and doubt and insecurity. The leap of faith is like the first step. And then you have to continue to take that leap of faith on the, on the path. So same thing with setting boundaries. You know, if you set a boundary with someone and you say, if you don't treat me like I deserve, I'm going to walk away. But then you never actually align with that boundary, meaning that person continues not to treat you how you deserve and you not you continue to not walk away. You're not actually setting a boundary because setting a boundary is the easy part. Saying something, making one specific move is the easy part. The commitment to that, even when it means having, you know potentially losing someone or something, that's where the hard part lies. Um, and you deserve that. You deserve to do that for yourself. An immediate, immediate future for Sagittarius, the magician with celebration. I really like this reading, though. Because basically what I feel like this is saying is if you, if you do these things, if you face the fear, if you face the unknown, if you, you know, choose to remove yourself from places that don't serve you and, and you know, open yourself up to places that do, you're going, celebration of the magician, like nothing but good can come from that. Like nothing but good can come from this. Immediate future for Sagittarius. But there's that, it's like you're, cl you're closed off to it. Oh, because of limiting beliefs. Is that, is that, no, that's, in, that's upside down. Oh, until. You will always be closed off to the abundance that you deserve until you believe you are deserving. So many people, and this, this happened to myself on my journey too, I believed that once I made that, in, that income that my, I had the goal of making, or once I reached that certain level of success, or once I'm in that relationship that I deserve, then I'm gonna feel loving, lovable, deserving, and good enough. But that's not true. You don't, your circumstance can never provide you with the belief. You have to believe it before you experience it, which means healing all the reasons why you don't believe it. If you don't feel lovable, why? Where does that stem from? Heal those roots. If you don't feel good enough for the financial abundance that you deserve, why? Where does that stem from? Heal those roots, you know? Um, so many people think, and, and that's why we chase, is because we think that that outcome is gonna make us feel good enough. If you felt good enough right now, if you knew that you were worthy and deserving and lovable and good enough for the things that you desire, you wouldn't be in a rush because you'd go, I know I'm deserving, therefore I can relax into the flow of life and allow these things to happen. You get to a point where you're so grateful 
for what it is that you desire before it even appears in your life because you know that you're deserving of it. But until you believe that you can are capable and deserving and supported by the universe on the path to what it is that you desire, you're not going to receive. That's the, that's the thing that most people miss. It's not about saying affirmations in the mirror 20 million times over, or doing the vision boards, and, and though those things can be great tools, it's about doing the nitty gritty shadow work and understanding why you believe the way you do and why your life is reflecting those beliefs to you. Because until you are willing to look at yourself from that, from that place, you know, accept that truth about yourself, accept responsibility for the role that you have played in your own suffering, nothing is ever going to change because your belief system will stay the same. I made a video on this about how 95%, no, that was too high, 75% of um, people who win the lottery, it was like, yeah, I think it was 75, 70 or 75, a high percentage of people who win the lottery go broke within just a few years. Even people who were in a good financial position before they win the lottery, win the lottery and go broke. And the reason for this being that they don't, they, they haven't done the work to get there. They don't, you know, they gain all of this abundance, but they still don't believe that they're capable, worthy, and deserving of this abundance that they've created, and they sabotage it away. Which is why the universe rarely, or pretty much never, will ever bring you what's meant for you until it knows that you won't sabotage it away because you know you're deserving, loving, capable, whatever the case is. This is a long reading. I apologize for that. <laughs> All right, immediate future for Sagittarius. I'm very passionate about this stuff, though, so that's why I'm talking a lot about it. Immediate future for Sagittarius. Last card. If you are not willing to embrace the unknown and you don't make the changes, okay. Basically, this is what this is saying. I'm not going to read these cards directly yet, but... What this is saying is if you continue to do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. If you try to fit in where you don't belong and sacrifice your worth for the sake of, um, for the sake of, of something or chase something because you think that you have to, your results will always be the same. You will always experience the tower. Things will always fall apart if we are not aligned with knowing that we are des deserving, capable, good enough, all of those things. Um, so this isn't a threat. I don't want this to come to think you to think that this is a threat. But I feel like sometimes we're so hesitant to change our behavior because we're afraid of that outcome, right? We're so used to our current habits and our current situation that there's a part of us that thinks, oh, well, I can stay here and, you know, maybe things will change in the future. But just understanding that if we do the same things, things are never going to change. We have to be willing to adopt different beliefs and different habits and, and different movements in our life if we want our results to change. And that's going to come with needing and feeling like you have to embrace the unknown with faith, believing that you are supported on that path moving forward. No longer settling um, in relationships or jobs where you are not deserving because you know that there's a better path out there for you and being open to receiving guidance toward that path. So being willing, because the death in reverse is the um, re hesitation to make changes and the nine of wands in reverse is kind of coming to that r like really to the end of a cycle and needing to make you know people think that when you um, leave the relationship or walk away from what doesn't serve you that that's when the cycle closes but that's actually not when it closes that's when you start closing it because you close it when you start to make different decisions moving forward when you're faced with the same situation the same circumstance and you make a different decision you know, if you are used to settling in a job that doesn't serve you and you are constantly feeling drained and, um, you know, undervalued and you walk away from it, good for you. But if you go right back into another job where you're undervalued, you're going to end up in the same position. So learning to do things differently by adopting different beliefs is the goal. Now, I'm going to hop on over to the extended, which is where we talk more about what you need to do. So, you know, this is very much the higher level, what you need to know, you know, and then, then kind of the extended is breaking it down like, okay, now here's how you start to learn to adopt new beliefs. So that'll be the information for that's in the description box below. Thank you so much, Sagittarius, as always, for your guys' support of my channel. It means absolutely more, so much more to me than you know. I obviously help that this reading, hope that this reading helped and resonated with you in a way that you were needing today. And as always, I wish you absolutely nothing but love and healing on your journey moving forward. All right, bye, Sagittarius.